Hey guys, this is an RCA Senior Volt Ohmist. They look familiar to some of you that have watched my older videos. I did a number on VTVMs, the, uh, their operation, their servicing, and their features a while back. Well, uh, it's come time to thin the herd a little bit. I've got several VTVMs and I decided that I no longer need this one. RCA made several Volt Ohmist models. There was, I believe, a Junior, a Standard, a Senior, and back there, the big one that's a Master. All have uh, uh, somewhat different features. The Senior is one of the better ones because it has very sensitive range, goes down to 0.5 on the DC and 1.5 on the AC. There's other models that don't go that low. It's also well made. Nice die cast aluminum cabinet that it comes in and a nice big meter. So, uh, a few years back when I got this, I went through it and replaced some out of spec components and calibrated it and uh, I've used it off and on ever since. One of the problems I had back when I initially serviced it is that there's a 7 mega ohm 1 watt precision resistor buried down in here that was bad. And at the time I just could not find a replacement for it. So I strung together a number of resistors to make one up. Well since then I did find one. That's that red resistor down back in there. A 7 mega ohm 1%. I found it at Surplus Sales of Nebraska. So I thought I would take the opportunity now to uh, go through it and fire it up and recalibrate it to make sure it's all working correctly before I list it for sale. Oh, one other thing I want to do is there is a ground clip that could use some help. It's a bit worn out. It's probably the original. It's kind of corroded and nasty. So I figured I'd remove that and put on a nice new one. The way this old alligator clip is attached, I ran a wire through it and soldered it on. I don't want to get that off. Figure an easy way to do it is just to kind of hook it under my workbench. Masonite top here, heat it up and see if I can pull that wire out. There we go, easy enough. There we go, that's not going anywhere. Slide this over. And get myself a nice new grinding clip. Cool. Alright, so. Next, I want to go through this procedure. I'm going to fire it up and let it warm up for a while. So it's right here. Let it warm for 15 minutes. I'm going to do a through electrical balance check. And then DC calibration, AC, and then an ohms adjustment. Back when I did this first time around, I don't think I had quite as nice uh, test equipment as I have now. So, uh, I'll be able to compare this to like a, a Fluke 27 True RMS multimeter when I do uh, the AC comparison and uh, resistance and so on. So, I'll compare the two side by side. I know this guy is pretty darn accurate. Before I jump into the calibration procedure, I wanted to mention a little bit about the probe. Some models of the Voltomus series use just banana jacks, and the probes are just uh, straight pieces of wire, insulated wire, just like this ground clip. Other models, like the Senior and Master Voltomus, have this connector on here, which I call a mic connector. Where it is, it's an outer threaded part with an inner conductor similar to a PL259. That screws on and it's got coax coming out of it. The 
at the other end is this the switch on it DC and AC ohms AC ohms just a straight piece of wire going through DC mode puts a 1 meg resistor in series with the tip without that their voltage measurements will be off that's necessary to, to complete the voltage divider circuit I will be including this probe with the meter WG 299D original RCA now if you don't have one you can hunt around they do show up on eBay occasionally or you can make your own could uh, like take a sharpie maybe clear it out and use this as the body maybe find a little switch use a, a needle for the tip or what you might do is take make two separate dedicated probes one straight wire going through for AC ohms mode and another one with the hardwired one meg resistor for DC mode Anyway, uh, I'll be including this and I'll be using it during the calibration. And uh, I'll be comparing the readings I get on this meter with my 27. I think I might have mentioned that earlier. Okay, so what do I want to start out with? Electrical, mechanical zero adjust. Well, do that, you pop this off, I believe, and it exposes a little screw down in there. Yeah, and you can tweak this so that this is on zero when the meter is turned off. And you want to do this, you want to make sure you're looking that the meter is upright and that you're looking dead on. That's why they provide this little mirrored strip back here it's to eliminate any parallax effect. So when you're looking dead on, you won't see, you should not see two of these lines, you should, in other words, the reflection should be directly behind the needle itself. Alright, and once we get past that, do the electrical balance check. Which basically means when you put in plus or, D, or minus DC volts mode, you should be able to use a zero adjust to make the meter deflect quite a bit especially important on the DC plus mode if you're going to be doing things like aligning FM radios because you want to be able to put the needle on this when you have no input so when you're checking FM detectors you typically want to see a needle swing up or down as it deviates from the center frequency so as you can see definitely a plenty of range plus DC mode Minus DC mode. Similar deal. So that's just checking some basic functionality that the meter is zeroed. And now we're going to calibration. And for this. I'm going to need to dig up a DC power supply that can uh, generate precise voltage. I just happen to have a 0 to 50 volt Hewlett Packard power supply I will be using, and I'll put this in parallel with the VTVM, so compare the readings. I'm using a Hewlett Packard 6228B dual DC power supply for my. DC calibration source. I've had the meter on for over an hour, warm up, and now I've got the meter on 150 volt range and the probe in DC mode and it's shorted it to the ground clip and I'm adjusting the zero control so it's right on zero. Okay. I'm going to put this in parallel with the fluke. Just a supply, so it's 50 volts. Just right at the upper limit of the supply. Yeah, 50.0, all right.
and there's a DC cow on the back. And I want to adjust it so that it's right on the 5 mark on the 50 scale. I think there's a typo on the instructions here. It says it should be exactly on the uh, 5 mark on the 0, 5 DC scale. Well, if you bring in 50 volts on the 5 scale, it's going to peg the meter. You want it to be on the 5.0 mark on the 0 to 50 scale. Off just a hair, so go to the back. And you can nicely label it right here. That is the plus DC adjust. Notice my supplies drifted a little bit. Took down a little. Take my word for it, that it is dead on right there. Here now you can see what I've been looking at. 44.0 on the 50 volt scale, so that's really 40 volts. And 30 and 30. Alright, on mid scale there, about 25 and 25. 20. It's off a little bit, remember the parallax, you gotta get look dead on. Drop down to. The DC calibration seems to be pretty solid. Let's check across the other ranges. Make sure so. At 10 volts right now, if I drop down to the 15 scale. Read here. It's pretty darn good there. And let's see, let's drop this down. Something like four. Five scale, right on four. Here we are down on the most sensitive scale, 0.5 volts, full scale. Got just about 0.4 volts in, and we get four on the meter. Next up, the AC calibration. For that, I'm using my PR57, set to 50 volt output, and 50 volt RMS on Fluke, true RMS, and 5.0 full scale, uh, 50 volt mode, uh, scale uh, in the AC mode. Here we are, just about 25 volts AC, and we've got 25 on the meter. So that just leaves the ohms mode. Now let's take a look at the ohms functionality. There's no calibration for this mode, but if everything is set up right, all the components are within tolerance, it should work fairly well. The key though is you've got to short probe together to ground and make sure it's zeroed and when you let go it's got to be over on infinity. Here's an 8.2k resistor I pulled out 1.1% precision resistor 
and run a times 1000 scale so we should be a little bit above 8 and there we are so everything seems to be functioning correctly it's within uh, calibration specs last thing I want to do is replace the cell in here with a nice fresh one and I'll recheck that the ohms works right that's what this battery is for it's just using the ohms mode I'll put it back together clean it up and I'm going to be listing this for sale on eBay just installed a nice fresh Duracell should be good for many years current draw out of this battery is not much at all And finally, here it is, put it back together and all cleaned up. Hope you enjoyed this look at calibrating an RCA Senior Volt Omist WV-98C.